Should the Housewife Receive a Salary? by Margaret Münsterberg. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Avai in December 2014. Should the Housewife Receive a Salary? by Margaret Münsterberg. There is a frequent complaint among housewives that, whereas their work never ends and requires just as much, if not more, energy and presence of mind, and is certainly as indispensable as that of their freer sisters in offices and schools, they, nevertheless, receive no measurable, that is, no financial, reward. The fact that these housekeepers are being supported and have the means of their husbands, fathers or brothers, as the case may be, for short we will call this collective concept husbands, at their disposal, seems an arbitrary and unsatisfactory compensation for their constant and thorough labors. The housewife, they maintain, should receive a clear-cut salary like any other executive official, only then will this most wearing of occupations acquire a dignity on a level with the salaried work of educated women. But would this really be the case? Can the worth of the so-called homemaker ever be adequately expressed in pecuniary terms? It may be said that there are certain well-defined positions in the field of domestic science which are salaried and have their normal stages of advancement. The matrons and housekeepers of schools, colleges and hospitals, the managers of clubhouses, community kitchens and the like have their careers and salaries like a lawyer, office manager or teacher. Why then should not the domestic administration of the housewife be recognized and rewarded in the same systematic way? But there's the rub. The graduate of a domestic science course will begin her career as an assistant or as the manager of a small establishment and work her way up to ever larger positions until finally she has a large staff under her direction and responsibility for the work of other beginners. This is as it should be, and the growing salary is an adequate means of measuring the growth of experience and responsibility. But can the housewife advance from smaller to larger establishments? Is the most gifted and energetic homemaker not bound for better and for worse to the chance salary or income of her husband? The incompetent little butterfly wife of a banker may preside over many servants, perhaps even over a salaried housekeeper and a social secretary, whereas the wife of a young college instructor, she who may be a brilliant college graduate and a former editor or teacher, will have to run her unusual capacities into the performance of daily manual tasks. If the housewife were recompensed in the same systematic way as the professional domestic science worker according to the size of the establishment which she directs, then the brilliant college graduate will receive a diminutive salary compared with that of the wealthy butterfly. Moreover, the excellent homemaker for the professional man of small means has no prospect of ever expanding the scope of her domestic activities very much, and if she can do so, it is not due to her own competence, but to the efforts or good fortune of her consort. Accordingly, it is impossible to grade the salary of the housewife in a way parallel to the grading of salaries in the field of professional domestic science. It has been objected, however, that if salaries were paid to homemakers on a professional basis, it would only be just to grade these salaries, not according to the size of the establishment, but according to the work done by the housewife herself. It requires far greater ingenuity, these objectors say, to make both ends meet and to make much out of little by careful planning, economy and taste than it does to let the cook order and the husband pay the bills. That is true enough, and the elastic accomplishments of the ever-ready working housewife, of course, deserve recognition. But if a hard and fast salary system is going to be adopted, it cannot be contrary to the established customs of the hard business world. 
it may require more energy and courage for the small businessman to do his own typewriting answer his own telephone calls and attend to all his affairs himself than it does for the owner of a large concern to drop into his office at ten o'clock and dictate to a large staff of workers but the small businessman does not from a business point of view consider himself the superior of his more prosperous neighbor but hopes by dint of constant effort and intelligence to rise to a position of equal prosperity we cannot upset the usual values of business life if we are going to apply a business-like evaluation to the administration of households on the other hand the accomplished young wife of a clergyman school superintendent or college professor would scorn to have her household compared with a business at the bottom of the financial scale it thus seems impossible to fit the most essential and exacting of occupations into a system of financial recompense further though the protesting housewife maintains that she works more hours during the day than her salaried sisters does she actually work for the same number of hours every day or has she not rather that freedom of the never free who can take their time off when they see fit but who must be ready for all-night vigils if an emergency demands it can such a state of mind for home-making is largely a state of mind be adequately paid at all the work of a physician of a college president and many other responsible professions require a state of constant readiness and usually too such sacrificial services are underpaid inasmuch as they are paid however the payment is given chiefly for a certain technical proficiency the educated young homemaker certainly does not want to receive cook's wages nor in the larger households is the mere administration the management of servants the keeping of accounts etc the beginning and end of the housewife's vocation inspired housekeeping is not a science but an art the combined function of an interior decorator a floral designer a caterer a kindergarten teacher a social worker a nurse and a humorist cannot make a sum total which will equal that elusive indefinable yet so very actual art of home-making it cannot be measured in terms of technical proficiency and therefore cannot be recompensed like the technical professions further like all good art it could never be paid enough and as the financial reward could never be commensurate with its real worth the practitioners of this art should recognize that it is better to withdraw their claims and that their services like all the best the priceless goods of life must be gratuitous end of should the housewife receive a salary by margaret munsterberg <laughs>